Hello, my name is Lewis Pickles. I'm applying for the MA in Drama and Movement Therapy. Um, my student number is 180424. In answer to the first question, from my understanding, the SESAMI approach is an experiential, non-prescriptive form of drama therapy that's rooted in a Jungian framework. Um, this approach seems to allow therapists to offer experiences that might tap into the client's unconscious through drama, movement, touch and sound. Um, the sesame structure was described to me by a previous um, student on your course um, as a, a really great structure that moves from focus to a warm up to a bridge in, a main event, a bridge out and to grounding, which um, really appeals to me as someone who's a facilitator myself, as a really clear structure. Um, something that I'm particularly drawn to is the idea that as a uh, sesame drama movement therapist, one would be able to tune in to the needs of a client or a group and um, recognize whether one of those stages they might need to stay at for a little bit longer. Um, I think about my experience currently as working with forensic patients at the Bethlehem Royal Hospital, um, that many of them find it difficult to tap into deeper emotions and therefore may require more time spent on the bridge in. It seems to me that the Sesame approach is one of the only psychotherapies or art therapy methods that engages engage with touch as a therapeutic uh, exercise. Um, which I think makes it an excellent fit for working with clients who are non-verbal or communicate differently. And that's something that really excites me about this approach. Um, although I have not experienced the Sesame approach myself, um, I have met a few graduates from the course and some current students. Um, and the more I learn about this method and the more I read about the Sesame approach, um, I'm certain that this approach is right for me to move forward um, in my practice and become a drum and movement therapist. So I first became aware of drama therapy when I was um, about 15 years old. I was torn between whether I wanted to go and continue studying the arts and drama, or whether I wanted to study psychology. Um, and I discovered drama therapy and was immediately drawn to this as a profession and um, was thinking about how I might get there. Um, and for the past few years, I've been working as an, an arts facilitator in community settings, um, which I'll get onto a little bit later on in the video. Um, so I started to research drama therapy and all the different ways in which drama therapists could work, all the different contexts they could be in. And then when I discovered that Central offers a drama and movement therapy course, I was keen to discover more about this, as I've always found that working with movement um, has been integral to my own practice as a facilitator as well as being really important for my own personal journey. Due to a variety of different health needs and risks, I, in parts of my life, have found myself unable to access touch. Um, this may be from risk of infection or pain um, due to um, my health needs. By taking the time to re-engage with safe touch and movement over the years, I've had the opportunity to become more and more aware of the value um, of being able to use one's body um, as for such a long time I was unable to do this without pain and I've done a lot of work um, over the past few years to reintegrate touch and movement um, back into my life in a safe way. It is this experience that stays with me within the work I currently do and pulls me towards the Sesame approach um, as I want to learn how to provide a safe place for individuals to experience that freedom within their own bodies and learn to express themselves through movement and touch um, in a similar way that I learned um, to do. For me, I've also used imaginative exercises when experiencing challenges in my, in my past. Um, and the ability to use imaginative play and storytelling to support people um, when they're engaging in some of their own personal challenges through a safe way is something that I am particularly interested in. And um, I've had the pleasure of seeing the power of drama and movement and imagination when working with vulnerable groups. And I now feel ready, having gone through my own personal journey, um, 
to train as a drama movement therapist in order to pro provide people with that deeper experience um, and help them to engage with imagination, playfulness, touch and movement, um, to build connections, to reflect upon themselves um, and to hold that space for them for whatever um, might come, come with that for them. So my experience of working with drama and movement has been quite varied over the years. Um, for the past seven years, I have worked as an arts facilitator in a number of different capacities and with a number of different communities and participant groups. Um, this has included young people with disabilities, forensic mental health inpatients, children and families in early years settings, university students, older adults with dementia and adolescents with mental health needs, to name a few. Um, in each of these contexts, I've been able to use drama and movement to build a sense of community and support the people in these groups to empower themselves and find connection, to share, be vulnerable, to express their stories in a way that feels safe. I've also found that the context uh, of the work has played a huge part in how I have practiced as a facilitator. Schools, youth theatres, care homes, hospitals all have different limitations um, and different strengths and I have found ways as a facilitator to work within these settings and learn how that context, um, the place might inform the work that we're doing and um, where I might be coming into this space, where the participants are meeting me in this space and that encounter, um, including the sort of visual space around us, how that will inform that creative process that we're all going on. So far in my work, a lot of the applied theatre um, projects that I've done have been inspired by the work of Dorothy Heathcote and her ideas of process drama. Um, I try in my work to facilitate experiences that feel spontaneous and playful and come from impulses. Um, I, don't, I don't try and come into spaces and say, this is what we're going to do today. Um, I may have a focus, if you will, um, and uh, from that we can move as a group. Um, I feel confident in sort of being in tune with different groups, um, allowing them to almost take a lead. Um, and from reading about this course and learning more about it, I believe that um, my experiences in this um, and sort of working in this kind of non-prescriptive way um, is something that I can bring forward and develop into this course as I know that it's something that the Sesame Approach um, is also all about. Um, aside from facilitating, um, I've worked as a cabaret performer um, and I've produced a number of shows. Um, and interestingly, although on the surface, cabaret may seem worlds apart from drama movement therapy, I find that the playful and spontaneous nature of cabaret performance um, that might play with notions of self and identity through storytelling, heightened moments, sort of iconographic sort of visuals, um, tapping into uh, characters and archetypes that, um, that we can play out on the cabaret stage, I believe that there's a really clear link for me um, in kind of that expressive nature um, that cabaret can offer. Um, through working in cabaret for a number of years, um, I feel like I have learned how to be comfortable in exploring my own body and moving within my own body. Um, and this experience as a performance maker um, has allowed me to really focus on the playful nature of my work as a facilitator as well and kind of see the, the balance between the two. One of my most enjoyable experiences as a facilitator was actually working with a group of um, cisgender heterosexual men um, and we were engaging with like a light touch approach to cabaret forms. It was all process, no product, um, to explore their own connection to their ideas of masculinity. Through this, I noticed that it was play and playfulness that appeared as the most important aspect to that project. The improvisational nature of the exercises I offered allowed these men to be playful. And for some, they were reflecting on how this was the only time they ever felt safe um, and felt allowed to be playful, which was a really um, wonderful experience for us to go on as a group. Um, more recently, um, 
I have been working at the Bethlehem Royal Hospital, engaging in a variety of different art forms um, in their forensic inpatient unit. Um, and this has been an opportunity for me to work with drama and movement in a way that I've not worked before. A lot of these men have cut up so, so much of like this front all of their life and part of their survival has been, has been kind of their performance of toughness. Um, and how do we actually kind of be more free in our body, release that tension, um, allow ourselves to perhaps be a little bit more vulnerable. Um, and also alongside this, I've been um, lucky enough to become an associate lecturer at Goldsmiths University, um, producing and delivering a module called Questions of Performance Self, um, which again is all about how do we use drama um, to explore what it means to be a person and what that means for ourselves and how does that feel? Where can we draw on autobiography? Where can we draw on memory? Um, and through this kind of collaboration with the students on in that module, um, I have already learned so much from them as well of how we can think about using drama and movement to um, express and explore and you know it's definitely particularly in the past four or five months I have really felt my practice solidify um, and I feel I have got a really strong grounding to now move forward um, hopefully into training as a drama and movement therapist. So some of the uh, questions that I have about this course, um, the first one is, as an experiential course, um, I'm interested in learning more about the assessment structure. Um, are we continually assessed throughout our engagements or the particular moments that we're being assessed? Or is there a bit of both? Um, I've seen a few things on the website about the assessment criteria and some of those objectives um, but I'm just keen to uh, know a little bit more about that assessment structure um, throughout the two years um, and my second question is um, it's a more practical note um, as this is a full-time course I would love to be able to dedicate all of my time and energy to it um, and not have to work alongside um, the course um, I am the first of my family to go to university, let alone um, do a postgraduate degree. Um, so I'm looking at my options in terms of funding. Um, I'm looking at ways in which I'll be able to fund myself over the two years um, for both obviously tuition and living costs. Um, but I was wondering if you'd be able to give me any information about bursaries or scholarships that you have on offer. Uh, I look forward to meeting you all on, on Monday the 12th. Um, and thank you so much for inviting me. And um, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me on this video. Cheers. Bye-bye.